Hey guys, this is Brian with VetSource. Thanks for stopping in. Just want to take a moment tonight to kind of uh, feature a Corvette rear suspension and kind of give you a little history on the evolution of Corvette suspensions over the years. Um, if you follow Corvettes or know anything about them, uh, they've been around since 1953 through basically eight iterations or body styles or major changes. So what I'm going to kind of do is give you an idea of what the suspensions look like over the years. So uh, in 1953 when the Corvette came out, it basically just had a passenger car rear suspension, Chevrolet passenger car, uh, mounted with a passenger uh, frame, and it was just a solid axle, live open differential that basically existed that way in the Corvettes for uh, 53 to 1962, so it went along for quite a while. In 1963, they introduced the independent rear suspension, kind of like some of the European cars, like Jaguar, with the half shafts and the uh, differential with trailing arms and things like that. Uh, but the one thing about it was it was all steel, from a cast iron differential case to uh, steel half shafts, steel trailing arms. The only thing that wasn't steel was the plastic liners between the leaf spring on the back. It had a mono leaf, but it was still made out of steel. Now that design existed until 1982. In 1980, they did change it to an aluminum differential, Dana 44, uh, for the last three years of C3 production, but it remained pretty much unchanged for that whole four, or actually 17, 18 years. So when the 84 Corvette came out, it was not only a brand new design, but it began to be replaced by almost everything was aluminum in the rear end and the front suspension, minus the engine cradle and the uh, trailing arm or dog leg uh, brackets that bolted to the, to the uh, unibody. And then the uh, rear tie rod assembly was steel, but everything else was aluminum. So that lasted from 1984 to 1996. And then what you have here in 1997, this is the iteration of suspension that began in 1997 and existed all the way up actually to current day uh, with very few modifications. Now, one reason they went to this setup, you can't see because I had the differential removed, but 97 was the year that Corvettes began to have, instead of a transmission mounted in the front of the car behind the engine in the traditional manner, they had a transaxle assembly, which was a transmission facing backwards, bolted directly up to the front of the differential housing. So it basically was a pretty cool setup. They got a better 50-50 weight distribution and has kind of evolved into what you see or is expected to come out with a C8 with a whole mid-engine transaxle kind of setup. So it should be a pretty interesting thing to see what they come up with for the C8. But as you can see here, this is basically an all aluminum setup from C5s and above, 97 and above. And you can see there's not much to it. You've got a spindle here, basically, with an upper control arm, uh, lower control arm, unequal length control arms, uh, meaning the bottom is longer than the top. And then here you've got your half shaft that runs out to the spindle and then back in to where your differential would be right here. Now, if you'll notice, if you guys have ever messed with front-wheel drive cars, this looks a heck of a lot like a CV axle because it actually is. It's got a CV joint here in the middle. You can see me flexing it back and forth, and uh, that provides a little bit of uh, dampening or ability for the, the suspension to move up and down because it kind of went with more of a corporate design upper and lower control arm that was a lot different than what they had in the past. So you've also got, this being a Z06 rear suspension, it's got the powder-coated red uh, brake calipers from the factory. But you can see it's it's relatively, for gearhead style, it's pretty simple. The one thing that's interesting on these is that it's actually got, instead of one long tie rod all the way back, it's got a mounting lug on the cradle that goes back to uh, handle your tie rod duties for your uh, camber on your rear suspension. So this being, this big aluminum piece here being your entire uh, suspension mount where it mounts up into the unibody and then it also contains your composite rear monoleaf spring that runs all the way back over here over to this point so it's it's a pretty cool setup um, I'll tell you personally after dismantling these cars for about 20 years 22 years now uh, this suspension while it's extremely effective and a good suspension and it's easy to work on to remove and put back into place it's not nearly as nice to look at or pretty to look at as a C4 rear suspension. A C4 uh, is made of basically all aluminum components, 
but it's designed differently without that transaxle setup, and it's just a neater looking thing. So a lot of the hot rodders buy that 84 to 96 suspension because they upgrade their hot rods with that Corvette suspension. So you'll see some people do this, but it's just kind of bland compared to the other. It's more like a, a function over form kind of thing. So, um, you know, as always, the parts I detail and feature on my channel here, everything's always for sale, except the wife and the kids and the, maybe the dog. But uh, and he's not that bad. There he is over there. So, um, yeah, that's the uh, American Walker Foxhound. About the smartest dumb dog I've ever had. So, anyway, um, thanks for checking in, guys. If you want to see some more videos of me detailing Corvette parts or tearing these cars down to see what's in them and what's inside them, uh, just to kind of get a look at them that you don't normally see, uh, make sure you hit the like button, comment, subscribe, please, to my link that I've got here on my channel. I think I've got a link to some of my other playlists and things that I detail for the channel. And I uh, hope to see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.